Hey all, I'm going to share a testimony of uh, Katie Perkins. Uh, she's a cricketer in, of uh, the New Zealand women's national team. So this is a brief. Okay. Uh, after setting her mind as a youngster to com compete for the New Zealand uh, women's national cricket team, Katie Perkins found herself lost and far away from that goal in her early 20s. But when she handed the game over to God, her athletic career took a positive turn. She debuted for the New Zealand White Ferns in uh, January 2012 and has appeared in more than 100 international matches since. Also a full-time police officer in New Zealand, the 30-year-old Perkins keeps her relationship with God at the forefront of all she does. So now I'm going to share the testimony as she has shared. To play cricket for New Zealand was the first dream I ever really had. Ever since I was 5 years old, this dream has given me a drive like nothing else. I had other passions but cricket trumped them all. I grew up going to church with a strong godly influence in my life because of my family. I was a good kid and uh, followed the teachings I learned in Sunday school. But being a good kid and knowing God are two very different things. It wasn't until I was 15 years old after being mentored by a good friend for a number of years when I started understanding the relational side of God. Then I remember one morning at, the, at church, I prayed to God and told Him I wanted to follow Him, to live my life for His glory. At that moment, the Holy Spirit filled me and the emotion and the adrenaline that surged through my body was something quite indescribable. But because I loved the game of cricket so much, my pursuit of a career in the game soon became my God. My self-worth was de defined by my success or failure on the cricket field. My mood was determined by how well I played that day. After my toughest season in 2010-11, my, my dream of playing for the White Ferns felt further away than ever before. I needed some, something to change. The off-season that followed turned my whole life around. I went to an ultimate training camp in April 2011, which was centered around Christ. There I met other athletes who had, who had a heart for God, all wanting to understand more about God in their sport environment. My eyes were open to the fact that God didn't care about my results on the field. He cared about how I played the game. I learned about playing for God an audience of one, and about my true worth, which can only be found in God. As the winter progressed, my best, friend, my best friend challenged me about where God was in my cricket game. The truth was, he wasn't there at all. After a lot of prayer and, and struggling with the reality, I may never be a white fawn, I tried to understand how to love myself for who I was, instead of what I could achieve. By the time the next season came around, I had let go of my lifelong dream and given cricket over to God. The freedom and joy I played with that season led to the most successful and consistent summer I had ever had and to the phone call that brought me to tears of joy as I found out I would be a white fawn. I wish I could say I, wa I always play with this type of joy and freedom but I can't. I struggled constantly as life and cricket got in the way I let myself become distracted. And let cricket take prior priority in my life once again. At a T20 World Cup semi-final, my love, love for cricket was non-existent. I was pretty low. I knew it was God that, that was missing in my life. I felt like my prayers were f falling on dead, deaf ears. But in reality, it was me who was choosing to be deaf toward God. When I got back to New Zealand, I reached out, out for help. I connected with chaplains and a mental skills coach. I've been more disciplined about going to church and, uh, and not allowing my sport to get in the way. I'm a work in progress, but I know I'm moving in the right direction, closer and closer to God. I don't always cope well uh, when I lose. It's an ongoing battle, but I try to remind myself of, God, of God's truths. I'm adequate. I'm perfectly loved. Whenever, whenever I'm lacking confidence in my ability to play, I remind myself of 2 Timothy 1.7, which says, For the Spirit of God, uh, for the Spirit God gave us, does not make us timid but gives us power, love and self-discipline. A strong visual I have connected with this truth is that of a 100 meter runner standing at the starting block. Whatever happens between the gun going off and the end of the race will have an impact on the immediate future of that runner in this life. But God's love and sacrifice for that athlete does not change one bit at the end of the race from, from when they were waiting at the starting block. I now aim 
to always have my faith play a significant role in my sport and in my life and i really appreciate when i see it see it in other players too uh katie's favorite verse is 2 timothy 1 7 for the spirit god gave us does not make us timid but give us gives us power love and self-discipline like we see how that uh she had cricket as her idol her achievements and dreams taking priority in her life and during an off season uh, how she went to a camp and discovered god and his love which doesn't change based on her performance or achievements and uh, then she also uh, we see her honest in admitting that even even after knowing god she made cricket an idol again she was behind cricket or some desires and passions again leaving god a little behind but then she came back uh, closer to god uh, yes god has given us a spirit of uh, power love and self discipline uh, self control yeah uh, god bless these uh, people in sports uh, who can witness jesus christ to to the people around them uh, praise god